show up and support us support the show girl we are popping on water right now because let me tell you we are hydrating <laughs> ourselves yes <laughs> we did last night mm. birthday weekend successful i would say <laughs> period so right. we have miss lena here <clears throat> she's a viewer and a good friend of ours um so we're going to talk about like you know self-care and balance like how do you balance you know school working Family life, different responsibilities. Like, how do you do it? I, go I honestly don't even know how I do it, but I just have to thank God. But honestly, like, at one point, it was, like, really hard for me to, like, balance everything. Like, I was just sad every day waking up. Mm-hmm. So what I used to do normally is just probably do something fun, like go shopping or do, like, self-care stuff. Probably take myself out to go on dates. Okay. And I recently actually got a puppy, Chase. <laughs> That's really like I really enjoy him, his company, and it's just mm-hmm. fun like watching him grow right. and then finding out all these new things. I never owned a dog before, so I really love it. Right. And also, okay. So tell me about like why were you sad? Like what what made you sad when you first moved out here and you know being a new in a new place? Like, what was the sadness about? It was because, like, my parents really didn't even want me to come because no one's here, it's just me. And, like, I'm the oldest, and so I have a lot of responsibilities. But I just wanted to do something for myself. And I didn't have anyone here. And so, like, I just felt really sad at first because I was like, man, like, my parents were right at one point. Like, I didn't want to give into it, but it was really hard. But after I stuck it out through, like, things started to turn around. I was able to find new friends, be able to go out, be more confident. Like, I really, at the end, I'm really glad that I did this because if not, like, I still would be, like, sheltered. That's That's amazing. That's amazing. So, I don't want to dig more into that. So, how did you, like, find your friends? Like, Mm -hmm. what what was that for you? Because I asked you because... As being like older, it's easier to like have build friendships when you're like younger in high school or in elementary. But like, it's kind of difficult, in my opinion, trying to build like new relationships as an older person. Mm -hmm. So, how did that work for you, or what did you do? that you know welcome people in i agree with that it's definitely very hard but you just have to put yourself out there because me personally i'm an introvert and i don't know how to like go approach people but sometimes you just have to fake it till you make it okay. because for me like nobody's gonna know your personality personality unless you put it yourself out there okay. so that's what i do so like i said while well, i used to like go out to these places i try to make conversations with people Okay. So that's kind of like, and if I'm vibing with them, you know, then we could just yeah, probably, please. yeah, okay. exactly. And then obviously in school, I try to be more socialized. Okay. A lot of people, so that's what I kind of do. So do you think like getting out of your comfort zone, that transition, it was very challenging for you, right? Yeah. And it was almost like an obstacle you needed to overcome to now open up a different like aspect of your personality. Mm-hmm. Like you're testing yourself in a way mm-hmm. to show like something you maybe wouldn't have found out about yourself if you had just stayed in your own little niche. Yes. So now getting outside the box <laughs> and meeting friends and stuff like that, what advice do you give for people just like trying to figure it out? Like whatever it may be. Don't waste time. Just do it. Because if you keep on wasting time, you're just going to keep on procrastinating. Mm-hmm. If I was still, still staying in Dallas, I would not like to go out. I would like to be like, oh, I'm going to stay indoors. But no, just do it. Because if not, like, time is, gonna, time is not on your side. So just do it. Like. So as an introvert, because I know we talk about extroverts, introverts. Mm-hmm. Chi-Chi and I, we're obviously extroverts, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. You can tell. <laughs> so as an introvert, what were some of the things that you look for in building these friendships? Like, what were some of your safe zones? I love someone who's loyal because I am very loyal and if I because I'm very observant as well so if I can detect that like I don't even try to like approach you because I don't want that and then I don't like fakeness at all I can't deal with it so that's kind of like one of the major things like a deal breaker like if you don't have that quality I'm out and that's why I vibe with you because first of all um I'm an extrovert and you're an introvert so it's kind of interesting how we kind of I think the way that we really kind of started getting closer is because you started talking. Uh, <laughs> I remember yes, that. Yes. Yeah, then that's all. Okay, well, I'm free 
You were ready, huh? Yeah, it is. I mean, now it's just like you like a good friend, and we hugging out, we hanging out, and then after you keep speaking, I keep finding out that we're very similar. We like the same shows, all these different shows that we talk about. She does games to Real Housewives. She likes um that we talk about that Tommy versus Natalie fight. She was already on that. She was like, I'm like, wait, hold up, you like all Married to Medicine? Like, we the same people. And then this Netflix show we've been watching. I've been trying to watch. She said she already watched. I was like, yeah, yeah. So yeah. So it's kind of interesting. So just put yourself out there. I guess is that yeah, it's the thing. Putting myself out there was kind of like scary for me almost because like I'm very like secluded and I care what people think whether I like to say that I don't. So it was kind of like a, a little transition for me. So yeah. I'm just glad that I did it at the end of the day. I like that for you. Because there's a dynamic between extroverts and introverts that I think is very interesting. Mm-hmm. And when you like test people and see like, okay, maybe they are going to just be nice. I may be more quiet, mm-hmm. but this person is a little bit more active and talkative. But let me just talk about something that I'm comfortable with. That's really mm-hmm. what you said you did. Yeah. You found something that you were comfortable with and then see what other people can relate to to kind of test and see, is this going to be a healthy dynamic for me? Yeah. And it worked out. And then like yeah. you said, you're very observant. I think it's important for people to really just kind of test it out. Like, you might not know if that person is going to be a good friend or not. But it's yeah. important to just see if it works. And if it does, great. If it doesn't, okay, we'll try again. Because now you know certain things to look out for moving forward. Yeah. So I think that's really important. And then for me, like, I also wanted to not just be introverted all my life. I wanted to socialize because I feel also that plays a part to it because some people who are introverts, they love to be introverts. Mm-hmm. I don't really like it because I feel like it's boring sometimes. Like, I feel like for my mental, like, I think I need to be out there. And that's probably why I was so sad for so long. Mm-hmm. So that's what made me want to, like, you know what? Like, I'm tired of staying like this. I'm going to do something different. That's amazing. So, yeah. yeah. And so would you agree that you have to test out different friend groups or different people yes. before you find your Click. Yeah, so for me, like, I, I guess opposites do attract because my first click that I did have, like, they were all like me, but I felt like I was the one that was extroverted, mm-hmm. which was not mm-hmm. the case. So <laughs> I was like, feeling like, damn, I feel so out of place. Right. I felt like I'm making you do something you don't want to do, and I never want to be in that position. So I just have to, like, you know, like, just like reflect, like, kind of like looking outside in, like, dude, is this something that's beneficial for me? Mm-hmm. So basically, you know, it happened how it happened. Uh, no bad feelings towards them, but um, we don't really talk. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And another thing that I thought was really interesting that you said was the fact that you had to kind of, like, you wanted to get out of your comfort zone, right? Mm-hmm. And you knew it was something that you needed to change. Yes. You, like, really internalized, like, okay, this is where I'm at, and this is where I want to be. Where is the disconnect, and what type of things can I do to fill that gap to get to where I need to be? Mm-hmm. So you have to be kind of in tune with yourself to know, like, hey, I'm introverted i need maybe extroverted friends yes. but that are not over the top but are yes. healthy yes. so that's so important to really be able to like test and see what you need to fill the gaps to give yourself your own satisfaction like yes. you really found your own peace and happiness i'm really glad i really did so yeah so that's a lot of good um context and everything like that thanks for being comfortable sharing that with us but that does bring us our next topic what is your take on this like having friendships and for some reason the friendship you know end Mm -hmm. how do you think how do you think you can can that friendship ever come back or you know have you ever been in a situation where a friendship of yours you know, y'all ended for some reason or took a little break and y'all came back. And if so, how did that transition for you? Uh, for me, like, I don't like to leave, like, bad bridges because I never know if I'll need that person in my future. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, this world is very small. small. But, like, uh, for some people, I feel like the friendship can never be repaired because of what happened. Okay. But if it was something like, you know, we just stopped talking because we just wasn't meshing anymore, I do feel like maybe in the near future something could happen, but right. maybe not as, like, you know, close how, how it was before, but okay. um, that's just how I feel about it. I don't think that all friendships that died will, like, come back together. Because for me, like, I had a quote-unquote best friend mm-hmm. when I moved here, okay. and it was a guy, but I don't I don't think we were ever going to be back for this again. I don't ever want to see him ever. Okay. I like that, though, because I feel the same way. I do believe there's certain dynamics where, like, friendships, maybe y'all were younger when y'all were friends, y'all kind of grew apart, and maybe mm-hmm. y'all can rekindle that friendship later, 
or maybe y'all were just not in a really healthy place. One of the friends maybe was dealing with something that you couldn't be there to support them. Or sometimes somebody does do something very trifling. And it's like, I don't need to rebuild this friendship. Like, there's so many levels. And there, I think it's good to know, like, some friendships can be rebuilt. It's okay to, like, pause them and then, you know, let people do their own thing, grow and see if you can grow back together. And then the ones that you need to cut off, it's good to just cut those off and the way you go about doing it. Like, sometimes it's like, ooh, this got a little messy. Yeah, because for me, the other friendship that I had to cut off, like, I didn't see anything beneficial. I felt like I was always giving, and Mm -hmm. I wasn't getting anything in return. Mm -hmm. And so there was no point of, like, even trying to go back to that situation. I wouldn't want to go back to it, so Mm -hmm. there's just some people that I can't. Yeah, that's true, though. I think we talked about that before. Like, some friendships have levels, and some of them just... Y'all grow apart. Um, so then my question with that would, would be, when y'all grow apart, do you put closure on it and you just let it grow apart and call it a day? Uh, or do you try to put a closure stamp on it, like have a conversation, like, okay, we're going apart, we're I, done. I, I feel like some people don't deserve that because of how probably how the friendship ended. Okay. Because some people can just ghost people, and I don't like that. And so I don't think that, you know, there should be any type of closure because you felt the need to, you know, just goes to me like you don't respect me so why should I respect you with the closure but then there's some friendships that you know they do require closure for you know each other maybe like in a relationship mm-hmm. a, a, a really like relationship with a boy and a girl like you know right yeah, so maybe then a closure but I don't think like all friendships need a closure because then it, it just seems like it's like a guy and a girl type. So I don't know if you know that. no 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 that's exactly right every relationship whether it's a girl boy whatever it's just a relationship and like you said has to be mutual, beneficial, like mutually beneficial. So if it's just you're given, it, it's not it's not a relationship. It's a pair a parasitic relationship and they're just taking and you're just losing. So I definitely agree. Yeah, parasite is pretty much the definition. Yeah. So um, I definitely agree with you with that. Um but what if it's a best friend? Mm. <laughs> and you just notice that you guys are just going separate ways but y'all haven't had that closure stop. Like what would you recommend in that situation or then what did you do with yours? Um, so, I mean, I already, there was already problems in the, re- in the relationship, and, you know, they were brought up to each other, and it was not being fixed. Mm-hmm. So, yes, mm-hmm. then I do feel like that should. But then even how everything happened with him, it wasn't a closure, and that upset me. Mm-hmm. And uh, it actually made me cry, but, like, I don't think that I, I already put myself out there, and right. I don't think that I want to do that again because it hurts. Mm-hmm. So, I I don't think so, but yes, with friend, with best friends, then yes, I do feel like yeah. So, do you think the saying is better to have loved than not loved at all when it comes to like these relationships and these friendships? And I know it's warm, girl. We up here trying to stay cool. Yes. No, you're fine. It is. It's Texas, so the heat is real. Yeah. Um, but like even with friendships, it's better to have loved than not loved at all because you know any relationship is a risk because you're vulnerable. And I think a lot of people get so scared to be vulnerable, so yes. they avoid relationships. Mm-hmm. Instead of just being like, okay, this is a risk, and it may be more of a calculated risk because I feel like these are the qualities this person has showed me, so I feel like I can take it a little bit more deeper as far as the friendship, but at the same time, they could come back around and hurt me. Like, yeah. it's just part of that process. Yeah, I'm very sure because I, because it wasn't the first time that we had a really big argument, and I let that person back in again, mm-hmm. and once again, they were disappointed. So, like, how many times do I have to do that? in order for them to realize, so... That's the I, question. How many times... That's the question. Let's, yeah. let's, Chi-Chi, how many times do you think somebody has to do something wrong for you to be like, this friendship needs to end? At least this phase of what it looks like. So yeah. I guess, like like you said, it's levels. So, mm-hmm. say that my friend slept with my man. Mm-hmm. We, um, we, we not have no, you know... <laughs> so we're not going to, you know... Fix that. But if it's just like, I don't know, the person, I don't know, just on surface level stuff, and I just didn't like it, and maybe they disrespected me or something like that, and we talk, I will not just let it go. Because they don't know, like, what if they don't know? That's, that's the kind of advice I give, like, to another friend. Like, what if they don't know that they're doing this to you? Right. You can't just ghost them because they don't know. Mm-hmm. So you have to have that initial conversation uh, because that's your friend, right? So that's uh, one. That's one. Initial, okay. So then after you have that conversation, if it happens again, It depends on which friend. I mean, I'm very much like cut and dry because I feel our most valuable asset is our time, like in our presence. So if I tell you how I'm going to be treated and I have these standards and you continue to 
disrespect that and you really don't care about me and my wishes, mm-hmm. then why do I care about this relationship? Yes, yeah, like true. I need to give you space to figure it out how you need to treat me and maybe we can come back around, but I need some time to really see how you're going to evolve because I've already said it multiple mm-hmm. times. I've given you chance after chance. So now, you know, like how many times? For me, for me, like I'm very cutthroat. Like I don't really like giving chances because I don't really like dealing with that. And that's something that I need to work on because mm-hmm. it's, I shouldn't really do that all the time. Like I'm really easy like, to uh, cut people. But um, for me, like moving forward, I like to give one person like, one or two drives, I mm-hmm. say. So yeah. three is probably like the best thing to do. Yeah. And I think that's a good point too you brought up because some people are more of like cut and dry, like I'm done. Mm-hmm. And those are like the, they say love avoidance. So I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with mm-hmm. like secure love relationships. Okay. So there's like a love addict, there's a secure attached individual, and then there's a love avoidant. Mm-hmm. So love addicts t- tend to have the um, tendency to just always enmesh themselves. And they are very forgiving. They want to be accepted. They're people pleasers. Mm-hmm. Then the love avoided is like, oh, you did this? Okay, great. You gave me a reason because I wanted to leave anyways. Like, they're more so like, I'm out. To protect their energy. To protect them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's their defense mode. I see. Instead of like a love addict who protects themselves by feeling cared by from that person. So they're going to be willing to do more to accept that. And then the healthy, secure attachment is kind of like, these are my boundaries. And if you continue to cross those after the amount of times I've allotted in my mind, then now I'm going to have to separate myself. So it's like finding that healthy balance between I'm out and, okay, I'm going to give you an opportunity because I do care about you. And I want you to, you know, I want to be accepted by you and I want to accept you as well. Like, it goes both ways. But kind of moving on to our next topic because I think it kind of flows. So colorism has been like a buzzword in our community. Are you familiar with it? Yes, I am. So what are your thoughts just off the top? Because we're not using any official definitions. So colorism to you. So colorism is basically in the black community where like darker skinned women like myself get uh, criminalized. Well, not criminalized, but discriminated Mm -hmm. against like other black people who are lighter complected. Well, actually like darker complected, but, you know, compared to a lighter skinned uh, black person. Okay. So they have more melanin. So the individual with more melanin or deeper, rich melanin versus ones that don't have as much melanin are pretty much put against each other. That's yes. what colorism has been. And it's been indoctrinated. Come to find out, it's just not an American thing. I thought it was just like a slavery situation mm-hmm. that started it all. But I've heard in other countries, yeah, even in Africa, because you're Nigerian descent, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so are you. Yes. So I'm not sure if y'all are familiar about that, but even Nigerians, like the different tribes and stuff have different color tones. Mm-hmm. And they're put against each other. So what are y'all thoughts about that? Like, how to rectify? What is the solution? I mean, it's been in grief for so long. I don't even know if our generation will be able to, like, overcome it. But um, I don't know. Wait. Yeah, so, I mean, it's fine. Like, us not being sure if we're going to overcome it. But I do think the conversations are being more prevalent now. Mm-hmm. Like, before I think it was just like, oh, that's not an issue. Mm-hmm. Like, fair, right. protected women probably need to see it as an issue. And it's also kind of along the lines of, like, white privilege. Mm -hmm. So it's like a a color privilege, too. And I think when we acknowledge it, then we can help solve it. And then us coming together, I just think, like, it gets so deep because, I mean, Whitney and I, we talk about this all the time. And I have friends that are darker complected. I have friends that are lighter complected as far as family, too. I'm sure y'all do have a variety. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I don't understand why there's an issue. But to me, the issue is not acknowledging that certain people have put certain shade tones on a pedestal yeah that's really what it comes down to yeah it, i feel like it all started sorry it feels like, yeah. i feel like it all started with slavery because you know back in the day like they had the lighter skinned people who were inside helping with yeah, like yes. mom stuff with the kids while the darker ones were out like picking cotton yeah. so they kind of like did that on purpose because basically they wanted us to argue with each other and now future 500 or 800 years later people are still dealing with the type of stuff that you know the white man like installed in us yeah. So. yeah that's 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 very interesting the light-skinned people were inside the house and being like the maids and things like that maybe because they were more lighter and closer yeah. to the white complexion so they were privileged enough for to be inside the house um so i don't know why um i don't know I really, I'm really not good at this topic because I haven't experienced colorism as myself. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm glider complexion. Mm-hmm. Um, so I haven't been in a situation where I saw this happen, mm-hmm. where a darker complex person and myself were treated different based on color. But I know it happens. 
Yes, right. Um, so I'm never really able to speak on this, but I know it's um, something that is not. And I'm going to get back really. to Lena because we need. <laughs> to your point, yeah. Chi Chi, I think it's interesting as brown women that we are not really, we're in the middle of the spectrum. Yes. And so I think that's why it's good for us to have these conversations with both sides of it. Mm -hmm. Because like, I agree with you. I've had friends that are darker complected that have told me about it. I was like, is that really an issue? Yeah. Like I was really oblivious and very ignorant about it. Right. I'm not even gonna lie because yeah. I have not really been in that penalized situation. in that situation. Right. But I am very aware that it exists. And I know like even men, they might prefer a lighter complected woman. Okay, and like, right. I mean, it don't stop the vote. Like, the vote still goes. Right. So, as a, a darker complexion woman, you acknowledge that you have a darker complexion. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Like, how do you deal with that? Or how have you been exposed to it? Because it's harder when you're younger because, people, like, kids are very mean. And then, like, me being dark skinned and then tall and a woman, like, there's, I just feel like there's so many stuff against me in the world. And, mm -hmm. like, society makes you feel like this is how you're supposed to be. And if you're not in it, then you're considered ugly and mm -hmm. I, I don't like that so yeah. of course when you're young you're trying to like fit in and then mm -hmm. all this stuff is in your way it just feels like very like challenging right but like now like I, that i'm older like i don't care like this is who i am i can't that's change right. it so mm -hmm. what do you want me to do about it if you don't like it move around like, that's right. don't try to like disturb me like i'm just minding my business disturb me talking about well i don't like this well okay that's i don't right. care so you are beautiful so, like, yes. your skin tone you are a beautiful woman in general yes, you're is. like an amazon like you're queen yeah, of course. And I think that needs to be acknowledged. And I like how you said, like, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. And my friend told me, like, go where you're appreciated. Yes. Yes. It's the day. Somebody go. Somebody. Yes. 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 I love it. Exactly. Okay. And I that's think that's my what we're crazy. We got to go where we're appreciated. Yes. Like, through all this skin tone, we can talk about it. That's fine. We can be aware of yes. it. But I don't think anybody should be, like, penalized or feel, like, less than. And if they have to, especially at a younger age, mm -hmm. I feel like it's on the parents. It's on communities to be like, hey, we know this is the issue, but how can we figure it out? How can we help instill confidence? Mm -hmm. And how can we help you identify, okay, well, if they have a problem and go to people that don't have a problem with it, you know? Because there's some people that love it. And then for me, like, my mom is light skinned, so I don't mm -hmm. think she understands what I go, go through. Mm -hmm. And then her being like Nigerian, she wasn't born in American society, so she doesn't know, like, what we deal with, what she dealt with when she was in Nigeria is different from what I would do in america and so like when i tell her these things like she doesn't understand like mm -hmm. this is what i have to go through but you know she tells me stuff like because obviously i feel like because she's my mom that's what she's supposed to do but mm -hmm. until then like I, I don't know like it's just how she was born so there's nothing like she's already old like she's not gonna change right yeah. so this is the real thing and this is just like the theme of today go where you love i mean everybody has their preference everybody has their likes and their wants and that's just like um, but you're going to gravitate. And once you see that, that attraction, you're going to gravitate towards that right click, that right person that likes you, that right, you know, friend. Um, so there's people out there for everybody. So I'm glad that we were able to gravitate towards each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and just like that, I mean, there's other people. So, And I also think it becomes very obvious when you're in certain arenas. So I don't know if you watched the um, Housewives of Potomac reunion. Ooh, I told her to get on I'm it. Okay. okay. So yes, Candace or whatever, she's a brown protective woman. She was like going off on Giselle, who is a light skin with green eyes, a black woman. And she was like, you feel like you can say whatever you want because you are pretty much passing as white, essentially. Mm -hmm. And not, I mean, this is, I'm uh, reiterating it. This is not verbatim. But she was kind of like, you think you can say whatever you want because you're white passing. Mm -hmm. And so I think like Candace has been very outspoken about the issue because she's on a cast with white, don't look like her. right? That very fair skinned women, and she feels like she's been criminalized for things that they haven't been. And I have a question: When she says all these things, do they tell labor her as like aggressive? Yeah, like, like yeah. Um, work not, like, and why do they do that? When, yeah. But when it comes to like most people who are white passing who look like they're white, that's true. They say like, oh, she's spicy or oh, she's that's a little true. sassy, whatever. Like they love it. Yeah, that's a, that's a exactly. Problem. It's true. They call it feisty. Yeah. yeah. Wendy, remember Wendy on the show too, when she kind of was speaking her mind. They kind of gave the light skinned ladies said she was aggressive, but she wasn't aggressive. She was using her words and she was speaking. A firm, yeah. firm, mm -hmm. but she's aggressive. I'm like, no. And then you go back and see clips of Robin like going off and bucking people. It's like, umbrella. Well, that's, that's aggressive. That's aggressive. Uh, or Mia throwing a drink and you know, and they go to her to the rescue. So yeah, yeah. colorism, colorism, colorism as an example. 
So I guess our best solution is to be aware of it, not to be ignorant, and then go where you are praised, go to where you are celebrated, and live in that, you know, because I feel like when we allow these narratives to define us, that's when we fail. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Why are we falling into the status quo when we know there's things beyond freaking skin tone? Like, yeah. can we cut it out? Right. This world is going to be freaking all brown in a minute, and y'all are worried about shades yeah do the crayons care about the color like what color they are in the color box do right. flowers care about if they're green pink blue whatever it is you know what i'm saying so i think we definitely need to put our energy and it's a way for us to be distracted from goals that we need to achieve mm-hmm. i think so for any last words you would like to say before we you know wrap up here um no i don't have anything okay. is there do y'all have anything no, no, we thank you so much for coming. Vibe Squad, thank y'all so much. If y'all have any comments, likes, you want to ask a question, please comment below. Yes. Comment, like, subscribe. We want to thank you so much for coming and just being so transparent, yes. being so comfortable talking to us. Yes. Like, I love it. We wish you the best. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. It's kind of like, oh, well, it's something different, but you did a great job. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Loudest drone. Loudest drone.